Starlink is SpaceX's satellite internet service that is supposed to make high-speed internet available everywhere around the world for a reasonable price. Aside from bringing internet service to even the most remote areas, the main purpose of Starlink is of course to help fund Mars. But given the massive initial investment SpaceX had to front to even make Starlink possible, how long will it take for Starlink to become profitable and how much funding will it generate for Mars? Well, let's take a look at how much it will cost SpaceX to even get Starlink up and running in the first place, starting with launch cost. A major advantage for SpaceX when launching Starlink satellites is that they can do it themselves. They don't need to rely on a third-party launch provider to get their satellites into orbit, and this saves them tens of millions of dollars every single launch. Elon Musk has previously revealed that it costs $15 million to launch a Falcon 9 with a reused booster. However, SpaceX charges commercial customers about $50 million per Falcon 9 launch with a reused booster. So, being able to conduct their own launches cuts down their launch cost multiple fold. I think SpaceX tries to stick with reused boosters when launching Starlink satellites, but problems do occur here and there. For instance, just a couple of weeks ago, a Falcon 9 booster fell into the ocean when trying to land on the drone ship. So, when we calculate the launch cost of these Falcon 9s, we do have to account for errors and unexpected issues that happen from time to time. To account for this, we'll say that 1 in 5 Starlink launches cost as much as launching a brand new Falcon 9, which comes in at $50 million. This should account for the cost of scrubs and the cost of unexpected repairs and any other miscellaneous expenses that come up as well. If we average that in, we get an approximate launch cost of $22 million per Starlink mission. Moving on, let's take a look at how much the Starlink satellites themselves cost. We don't have an exact price for each satellite, but SpaceX has previously revealed a price range. At the end of 2019, they revealed that each Starlink satellite already cost less than $500,000. However, their goal was to get this down to $250,000. Hopefully, they do achieve this goal, but to be conservative, we'll say that the average Starlink satellite ends up costing a little more at $300,000. That should account for the dead Starlink satellites that SpaceX has here and there. With each Starlink mission, SpaceX launches roughly 60 Starlink satellites into space, meaning that each payload costs approximately $18 million. If we add this to the cost of launching the Falcon 9 itself, we get a price of $40 million per Starlink mission. However, simply manufacturing the satellites and launching them are not the only costs involved in setting up Starlink. We also have to account for the cost of actually developing and upgrading Falcon 9 as well as the satellites themselves. There's also the cost of getting licenses to launch the satellites and monitoring the satellites after they're in orbit. Fortunately for SpaceX, I think they've subsidized most if not all of their Falcon 9 research and development costs using commercial contracts. And as for the development of the satellites themselves, this is really not too complicated. It's not like they're trying to land boosters or belly flop starships when they're designing the satellites. As a result, these additional expenses shouldn't add too much to the cost of the mission. But we'll call it $10 million per launch just to be on the safe side. Adding everything together, we get a final launch cost of $50 million per Starlink mission. If we divide that by the number of satellites in each mission, we get a cost of $834,000 per satellite. SpaceX plans to keep each Starlink satellite in orbit for 4-5 to five years before deorbiting and replacing them. Since we've already been conservative everywhere else, we'll say that SpaceX keeps these satellites in orbit for 5 years. That means that each satellite costs $167,000 per year or a little less than $14,000 per month. At this point, if we figure out how many customers each satellite can support, we can figure out how much it costs SpaceX to provide service to each customer and how much it will subsequently profit. Unfortunately, SpaceX has not revealed how many users each satellite can support, but we can estimate this based on how many satellites they plan to launch and how many customers they plan to support in total. In August of 2020, SpaceX requested permission to support 5 million customers using Starlink. At the time, they had permission to launch 12,000 Starlink satellites, meaning that they were planning for each satellite to support about 416 customers. Dividing the monthly cost of running each satellite by the number of customers it can support, we get $33 per month. Adding in another $2 to account for customer support and cancellations, we get about $35 per month per customer. Currently, SpaceX is charging $100 per month per customer. However, I think this is mainly because they haven't been able to take advantage of economies of scale just yet. Right now, they only have 10,000 users total, so their operation is no doubt in the red by quite an amount. As they grow to millions of customers though, I suspect they'll lower the price to $80 a month and they'll likely add a $60 a month option that comes with lower speeds. Considering that Starlink will mostly be used by people living in rural areas, I think it's likely that most of them will be more than happy with the $60 offering. Nearly everyone with tech jobs that require high-speed internet connections live in or around major cities, and a lot of these tech hubs already have fiber internet availability. 
So, I'm not sure how many of these people will consider Starlink, but to give SpaceX the benefit of the doubt, we'll say that there's an even split between people buying a $60 subscription and an $80 subscription. This means that SpaceX's average long-term revenue per customer is $70 a month. Subtracting the $35 that it costs SpaceX to actually provide the service, SpaceX is left with a profit of $35 per customer per month when launching with Falcon 9s. SpaceX is eventually planning to transition over to launching with Starships, which will not only significantly reduce launch cost, but also significantly increase payload capacity. SpaceX is making rapid progress in terms of Starship development, but even at this pace, it's likely going to take till at least the beginning of 2022 to start doing consistent launches with Starship. More realistically, we're probably looking at 2023 or 2024. So, for the first phase of Starlink deployment, we'll say that SpaceX primarily uses Falcon 9s. SpaceX aims to launch a total of 4,425 Starlink satellites by 2024. Right now, they already have over a thousand satellites in orbit, and even completing just two Starlink missions per month like they have been doing would be enough to reach this goal. If each satellite is able to support 416 customers like we previously discussed, SpaceX could support about 1.84 million customers by the end of 2023. At $70 a customer, SpaceX would pull in $128.8 million per month in revenue and $64.4 million per month in profit. On an annual basis, that translates to $1.55 billion in revenue and $773 million in profit. Subtracting 20% for taxes, we get a net annual profit of $618.4 million. If SpaceX does decide to IPO the Starlink portion of their business, we'd likely see a super high PE ratio of 30, 40, 50, or even 100. But if we're talking about a fair grounded value, I think 15 is a good PE ratio. Keep in mind that though Starlink is helping fund Starship, Starlink itself is really just an internet service provider at the end of the day. So, at a PE ratio of 15, Starlink would boast a market cap of $9.276 billion, or about $10 billion by 2024. But what about after SpaceX starts launching using Starship? Well, everything we discussed so far would remain the same except for the launch cost of each rocket and the velocity at which SpaceX is able to deploy satellites. Elon Musk's long-term goal for Starship is a launch cost of just $2 million. Let's not forget that Starship will also have over 4 times the payload capacity of Falcon 9. Clearly, this is definitely a super ambitious goal, and I truly hope that they are able to achieve this. But for this video, we'll use a price of $5 million to launch as that seems more realistic. I hope Elon proves me wrong though. Anyways, this would subsequently knock off $17 million from the launch cost of each Starlink mission, bringing it down to $33 million. Meanwhile, the cost of the payload will increase more than threefold, as Starship will be able to carry 250 satellites, if not more. At $300,000 a satellite, each payload will boast a value of $75 million. That's $57 million more than the Falcon 9 payload, increasing the total mission cost to $90 million. At this point though, we can divide by a much larger denominator, which will significantly bring down the cost of each satellite. Dividing $90 million by 250 satellites, we get $360,000 per satellite. Spreading that over 5 years, we get an annual cost of $72,000 and a monthly cost of just $6,000. With 416 customers per satellite, it will only cost SpaceX $14.42 to support each customer. Accounting for any miscellaneous costs, we'll call it $15 per customer per month. As for how many customers SpaceX can support, each launch of 250 satellites will add $104,000 in terms of customer capacity. If SpaceX sticks to about 2 launches per month, they would be able to add about 2.5 million more customers every year. Given that their satellites have a lifespan of 4 to 5 years, SpaceX could grow to about 10 to 12 million customers pretty naturally. If they really focus on growing a satellite internet business, I'm sure they could grow to tens of millions of total customers. But we have to keep in mind that SpaceX is using Starlink as a method to fund Mars while helping people with poor internet. They're not trying to compete against AT&T or Spectrum. So, we're going to say that SpaceX simply maintains their customer base once they reach 10 million customers, which should be possible by the end of this decade. In the latter half of this decade though, it's likely that Amazon and Blue Origin satellite internet offering will also be up and running. Thus, SpaceX will have some competition. This combined with even cheaper launch costs will likely lead to SpaceX lowering prices for their services. Maybe, instead of charging $60 and $80 a month, SpaceX will charge $40 and $60 a month. In such a scenario, the average customer would pay about $50 per month. With 10 million customers, that comes out to $500 million per month and $60 billion per year in revenue. Subtracting SpaceX's cost, we get $350 million per month and $4.2 billion per year. Subtracting another 20% for taxes, 
we get a net profit of $3.36 billion per year. Again, applying a PE ratio of 15, we get a market cap of $50 billion. In the long run, SpaceX might push it to 15 or 20 million customers, but I don't think they'll go much further than that. So, at the end of the day, Starlink is capable of net profiting up to $7 billion per year, being worth up to $100 billion. Do you guys think that's reasonable? Comment that down below. Also, drop a like if you guys are excited for the future of Starlink. And of course, consider joining our Discord community to suggest future video ideas, and consider subscribing to see more questions logically answered. But until then, I'm Hari, and I'll see you guys on the next one.